2018 offered a huge range of awesome, diverse films in just about every genre, but which are at the top of their class? These are the very best films 2018 has to offer. John Krasinski, best known for his role as Jim Halpert on The Office, probably isn't a name that comes to mind when thinking about the horror genre. I ate a tuna sandwich on my first day, so Andy started calling me Big Tuna. I don't think any of them actually know my real name. But after cutting his directorial teeth on TV and a couple of well-received low-budget features, Krasinski made the leap from the world of comedy to the realm of fright flicks with A Quiet Place. Krasinski stars along with his wife Emily Blunt in the tale of a couple plagued by mysterious creatures who hunt by sound, forcing them into a tense and silent existence. Rolling Stone's Peter Travers called it an instant horror classic, citing Blunt as a highlight by calling her in a class by herself, taking a near-silent role in building a tour de force of expressive emotion. The Toronto Toronto Sun's Liz Braun agreed, calling A Quiet Place a terrific movie, beautifully made and carried along by strong performances and skillful storytelling. It'll scare the hell out of you, too. In a year that's shaped up to be a great one for fans of horror, A Quiet Place stands atop the critical heap. After 10 years, Marvel Studios isn't surprising anyone with the high quality of its films. With director Ryan Coogler and star Chadwick Boseman on board, Black Panther was naturally another winner. The film managed to surpass even the highest of expectations, surpassing $1.3 billion at the worldwide box office, making it the highest-grossing solo superhero movie of all time. The movie appeals to more diverse audiences than standard superhero fare, and Black Panther was simply astonishingly good. Interesting. Many critics have proclaimed it to be on a totally different level from the rest of the MCU, exploring themes of alienation and loss more effectively than a comic book film has any right to. Special credit goes to Michael B. Jordan's conflicted villain, Eric Killmonger Stevens, who's been cited as the MCU's best villain ever, thanks largely to the actor's towering performance. Don't trip. I'm gonna take it off your hands for you. These items aren't for sale. How do you think your ancestors got these? You think they paid a fair price? Slash Film summed it up the best. Run, don't walk to the theater to see Black Panther. This is not hyperbole. Saying it's just good is underselling it. It is perhaps the best film of 2018. Even the eye-popping box office success of Black Panther was only a warm-up act for Avengers Infinity War, which shattered too many records to list here. Part one of the culmination of Marvel's three-phase mega-arc brought together nearly every hero introduced in the MCU thus far, and fans responded by putting up tremendous box office numbers. Sure, Infinity War didn't earn the widespread critical adoration enjoyed by Black Panther, but positive reviews recognized it as a gigantic feat of storytelling, delivering meaningful arcs for characters we've come to know and love. Notably, its villain, Josh Brolin's Thanos, moved some critics to declare the Mad Titan as one of the MCU's most effective villains ever. Your planet was on the brink of collapse. I'm the one who stopped that. The film's amazingly dark cliffhanger ending caused some reviewers to call Infinity War half a movie, but perhaps their tune will change when Avengers 4 debuts in 2019. It's no surprise here that Marvel Studios landed their 20th straight film to debut at number one with the lively and entertaining Ant-Man and the Wasp. Audiences needed a bit of a palate cleanser after Thanos' big snap, and returning director Peyton Reed gave them one. A worthy sequel to 2015's Ant-Man, this follow-up is even more assured and perhaps even funnier than the original. What's up? You remember uh, that beloved commercial? What's up? Filmfare.com went so far as to call it, quote, the funniest Marvel film you'll see, which is high praise considering that Thor Ragnarok was released less than a year prior. The film's loose, playful tone and confidently staged action pieces made even more novel use of the hero's size-changing technology than the original, and the film's reasonably low stakes, compared to Infinity War, make it a great light break from the MCU's recent trend toward all-out destruction. But if you're still traumatized from Infinity War, you may want to skip Ant-Man and the Wasp post credit scene. Fans of Ryan Reynolds' Merc with a Mouth eagerly awaited the follow-up to 2016's ridiculously popular R-rated hit Deadpool, and Reynolds, along with incoming director David Leitch, didn't disappoint. Fans of the original knew they could expect insane action and over-the-top vulgarity, but most weren't ready for the surprising amount of character building and emotion in the sequel. Plus, as promised, they introduced Cable in this one. Wire gushed over the performances of the entire cast, noting that Deadpool's assembly of the mutant superhero team X-Force gives Deadpool 2 
to a much stronger narrative arc and emotional payoff than its predecessor. They also praised the ending, calling it surprisingly heartfelt. This sequel actually set out to be a movie, not just a series of jokes stuck to a MacGuffin. It's the rare sequel that might just surpass its beloved predecessor, and some critics called its post credit scene the best one ever, which is really saying something. Picking up literally seconds after the 2004 original, Incredibles 2 deals with the destructive consequences of superhero battles and how the Parr family survives in a rapidly changing world. But even in this era of superhero movie box office dominance, Incredibles 2 is unique, and it still manages to stand shoulder to shoulder with everything Marvel and DC have to offer. In one of the many glowing reviews for the film, Calvin Wilson of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch called it one of the most entertaining films of the year and one of the smartest. It sets a standard that few superhero flicks animated or live action can match. In a year typically stuffed to the brim with high-profile superhero adventures, Incredibles 2 proves Marvel Studios aren't the only ones who know how to score a critical hit in the genre. For over two decades, Tom Cruise has put himself in mortal danger for the surprisingly resilient Mission Impossible franchise, which has failed to lose speed despite its star's advancing age. Now in his 50s, Cruise continues to insist on doing every stunt that it's physically possible for him to do. Honestly, audiences don't go to a Mission Impossible film for character beats or high drama. They come for the action, and Mission Impossible Fallout delivered in spades. Director Christopher McQuarrie's sure hand behind the camera, plus Cruise's dedication to the role of eternally put upon IMF agent. Ethan Hunt resulted in a crackerjack picture which pulled down some of the best reviews of the entire series. As impossible as it may seem, this venerable action franchise and its star just seem to be getting better with age. Or, as succinctly put by the Detroit News' Adam Graham, bless this franchise, we're truly not worthy. Crazy Rich Asians, featuring Constance Wu as a native New Yorker who accompanies her boyfriend to a wedding in Singapore, became a surprising critical smash and a cultural phenomenon as the only romantic comedy in recent memory to feature a nearly all-Asian cast. Reviewer Randy Jones encapsulated the positive consensus in concluding his review. Crazy Rich Asians takes familiar tropes and revitalizes them and its entire genre with a great cast, amazing direction, and powerful writing. Like Black Panther before it, Crazy Rich Asians constitutes a clear message to Hollywood execs that heartfelt, well-executed stories featuring people of color can not only cross cultural boundaries, but smash them and earn huge box office in the process. A classic Hollywood story that's been revisited no fewer than three times since the 1937 original, A Star is Born got new life in 2018 with a lovingly crafted retelling that may prove to not only be the finest version of the story put to film, but one of the greatest remakes of all time. Directed by and starring Bradley Cooper, the film tells the story of up-and-coming singer Allie, played by Lady Gaga, who falls in love with an established musician and begins her ascent to stardom even as the career of her mentor and lover begins to decline. Cooper displays some true directorial skills. Adam Epstein of Quartz called his direction, quote, instinctive and remarkably orchestrated, enhancing his own spot-on performance while taking full advantage of Gaga's smoldering star power. To nobody's surprise, she absolutely crushes it in her first big-screen leading role, with piles of notices singling out the realistic chemistry between the two leads and Gaga's powerful and winning screen presence. Expect Oscar nominations. Striking actress Anya Taylor-Joy has been busy carving out a niche for herself as a modern-day scream queen, with highly visible roles in critically acclaimed fright flicks The Witch and Split in just the last few years. First-time writer-director Corey Finley was lucky enough to secure her for his debut feature, the black comedy thriller Thoroughbreds, and with the help of his clockwork script and tension-generating direction, he was able to score a winner on his first outing. The plot follows reuniting friends Lily and Amanda as they scheme to murder the former stepfather. Critics agree that Finley shows the kind of self-assuredness and confidence in his vision that normally eludes freshman filmmakers. Christy Lemire praised the film as classically Hitchcockian in its smoldering homicidal tendencies, yet bracingly current. Other reviews singled out Finley's masterful balance of humor and darkness. It seems that he nailed it, and also that we might have a major new talent on our hands. Love, Simon was destined for praise for one simple reason. It's the first major studio Hollywood film to focus on a gay teen romance, which is a groundbreaking endeavor in and of itself. Fortunately, director Greg Berlanti delivered a film that's notable for far more than just that reason. It's a funny, disarmingly sweet rom-com that some critics are comparing to the best work of John Hughes. Working from a 2015 young adult novel titled Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, the script is populated with strongly drawn characters, all with feelings and motivations familiar to anyone. Nick Robinson was singled out for praise in the 
a lead role, among a strong cast which included Jennifer Garner, Josh Duhamel, and Alexandra Shipp. Critic Sheila O'Malley called the film, quote, a radically inclusive act, which was a common theme throughout most of the glowing reviews. Den of Geeks' Delia Harrington proclaimed it a rare, uplifting, romantic AF LGBTQ movie to be prized. With a modern soundtrack and a diverse cast, Love, Simon is the kind of movie many people wish they had growing up. The films in the Transformers series have produced consistently diminishing returns, both critically and at the box office, and you could be forgiven for expecting Bumblebee to offer more of the same. But with director Travis Knight taking over from Michael Bay and working from a smart 80s-set script, a funny thing happened. Bumblebee debuted to stellar reviews, with near-universal praise for its smaller, more personal story and throwback vibe. Meanwhile, lead Haley Steinfeld was singled out for her heartfelt, nuanced performance. Surely the first time those words have been applied to a Transformers movie. For proof of that, see Exhibit A. Bumblebee, stop lubricating the man. Simply put, Bumblebee served up what the series had thus far struggled to provide heart, wonder, and fun. God, I'm so screwed. Sony Animation's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse skipped the traditional Peter Parker-focused Spidey story in favor of fan-favorite Miles Morales. Based loosely on the Spider-Verse comics event, in which multiple Spider-People from different universes must band together to take on a common threat, the film leaned into the idea that anybody could be behind the mask, and followed through with its wildly eclectic collection of Spider characters. Hey guys! Wanda? It's Gwen, actually. Oh, you know her! Very cool. In addition to its spot-on characterizations and story, the flick drew tons of praise for its insanely innovative animation style, rendered to look as if it were leaping right off the comics page. Some critics went so far as to call it the best Spider-Man film ever made, with others suggesting it should be a shoe-in for an Academy Award in the animation category. An unmitigated triumph for Sony, Into the Spider-Verse opened up whole new avenues of storytelling for Spidey, and garnered wider acclaim than nearly any wide release of 2018. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.